Hi there. In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can use the Moodle close question type, also known as embedded answers, to create some effective quiz or exam questions that include journal entries in such a way as to limit the amount of manual marking that you would need to do. Some of the limitations in Moodle when it comes to questions where students might have to create journal entries is that if they enter the information in a different way than from how the question is created, then they can be marked incorrect where their response could actually be considered correct. So I'll show you two different variations of a lease question. One where the student would enter their answers for account names in blank fields, and the second where they can select from a drop-down menu. On the left panel here, I have the preview of the question, and on the right is the question editor in Moodle. So here's a question that's on leases. There's some information up front, and there are five requirements here. So the first requirement is to create a journal entry. You can see that I've indented the credit fields in journal entries for requirements one and four, but not requirement two, because I don't want to give away to the student how many debits and credits there are when you have a compound journal entry. When there's only two lines in an entry, then it really doesn't matter. Part of what you want to do as well is make sure you give the students specific instructions or guidelines. So for this one, we've got a journal entry in red. I have entered debits before credits. For this one, that kind of goes without saying. So let's say this one, the correct answer is going to be a, uh, a rights of use asset. And let's say that's 100,000 and lease liability for 100,000. And then if we submit that for marking, then you can see that their answer is marked incorrect for both the right of use asset type and the lease liability type. And the reason why is because my answer included rights of use instead of right of use. And the lease liability is spelt incorrectly. See, I'm missing an I here. So how can we create this question in such a way as to give the student a little bit of benefit of the doubt? So in the question editor on the right, the way we would get the student to answer this question is to allot one mark for what's called an SA or short answer, and then colon equals will determine what the correct answer is. So here I have right of use asset. You can see that this answer right of use asset actually includes dashes between the right of use, and then I've also included it without. So I've actually set this question up to provide the student with some flexibility with their answer, but when I entered rights of use asset, that was also marked incorrect. So I could provide another answer that would be rights of use asset. And I also provided an opportunity for the student in terms of the credit account to have either a lease liability or lease obligation. And you can see that that's separated by a tilde. So you can have multiple correct answers. You can even provide a correct answer with a penalty if you want to give partial credit, but I'm not illustrating that in this video. And I'm allotting one mark for a numerical answer of $120,000. I'm allotting only one mark because this one has already provided that amount. There's no calculation. And I'm only awarding it once. You can see here in the credit, I'm saying give the student zero extra marks for putting the same number in the credit column. So if I now save and continue and then generate a new preview, then this should give me the option for rights of use asset. We know the answer is 120,000 this time. And lease liability, I spell it correctly. And let's submit that for marking. And now I've been marked correct on it. The other thing to note here is when you have SA, that particular question type does not require the student to keep the case. So they could use a capital R, they could use all caps, however they want to mix it up. They could use lease liability or lease obligation in that answer. So that's how I generated the first part. Then if I start this question again, now let's look at the second requirement. Notice here that I've got two big fields and a small field, and my number fields are kind of all over the map here. I've got wide ones and small ones. Well, this could give the student a little bit of a hint, perhaps, as to what some of the accounts might be. Because in this second entry, the correct answer is actually, as you can see here in the question editor, is going to be a debit to lease liability, a debit to interest expense, and a, and a credit to cash. So if a student knows that, okay, cash is a small word, then that's probably what this is. So we can actually trick the student by providing another answer as correct, but they'll never put in. That's, let's say, equal to the longest number of characters in this answer. So I actually counted the number of characters. I believe in lease obligation is 17 characters. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
So this is supposed to represent kind of a 17 character placeholder to present a wider field to the student. So if I save that now and generate a new preview, look at that. The last field is the same width as the first field. Then we have these short little boxes here. Well, as we can see, the correct answer for this entry, if I fill in the correct responses here, would be a debit to lease liability, interest, expense, and cash. But of course, when you have a debit, then you shouldn't have anything in the credit column. And I don't want to give away to the student what the debits and credits should be. Well, if we have an answer here of zero, which is what the correct answer would be, and I'm allotting no marks for it, then what happens is the student can look at the way it's presented and go, oh, it must be zero. So that must mean that the first two lines and the last one are debits and credits. So what we can do is we can fool the student a little bit here by making an answer actually be 0 0.0001 for those fields where you want to have a zero entered in. So 0, 0.00, and I'll do the same here. And then we will save and continue editing, generate a new preview, and now look at the field lengths are actually a little bit longer. So student looks at this and goes, well, I really can't tell where the debits and credits are supposed to be. And here's where the instructions become all that more important. So here I've instructed the student to enter debits before credits, as they always should, and enter the amounts in the order of highest to lowest dollar value. And if a cell does not require a number, leave it blank or enter zero. So whether they leave it blank or put a zero in, they will not receive any marks for it at all because of the way I've set this up. So at the mark allocation, looking at this entry, a student could, without the directions to enter the highest first, could enter a debit to lease liability or lease obligation first or interest expense. Either is correct because as long as debits come first, we don't have to have a larger amount. So by instructing the student to put the larger amount first, then we force them to enter it into the order we want them to enter it, which can reduce the amount of manual grading. So we are allotting one mark to a short answer, which allows for the term lease liability and also lease obligation. I'm allotting two marks for the calculation of an NM, which is a numerical type question with an answer of 1,676. Now, if they have a rounded answer, and let's say they enter 1,680, then they'd actually be marked wrong. So and I'll show you that right here. So let's say lease obligation of 16, 80. And if we submit and finish that, they'll be marked wrong and they're only $4 off. So if we go and we add some tolerance by putting a colon in and let's say giving them $5 in tolerance so they can be plus or minus $5, then they'll still be marked. So we will save and continue, start a new preview. And now you'll see if we put 1680 in that field, it should mark as correct. And it does. So I've allotted two marks for that. And then since there should be no credit for that row, I've allotted zero marks for a numerical answer of 0 0.0001, which should actually be zero. In fact, if we want them to enter zero and get a correct mark, we can provide a tolerance of being plus or minus one. That will result in them not being marked incorrectly by putting a zero in the cell. If they leave it blank, then it will show it's incorrect, but there's no marks allocated anyway. So I'm gonna put a colon one for each of those. And here for the numerical response for the amount of cash, 2376 I've left at the exact amount because the amount is of the payment is provided. So if we save and continue and then preview, now we can put in, I'll just put the, the numbers in. So 1676, 700, this would be zero, zero. And I'm gonna leave the debit this one here, which should be a zero. I'm gonna leave that blank and put 2376, submit and finish. So here's what it did is it marked them correctly for the two debits and the credit, correct for putting a zero in because of tolerance. It marked them incorrect for leaving it blank. However, there are no marks allotted for that, so it doesn't matter. It just shows up as being incorrect, but they'll still earn the full marks for the question. Then I've got a question here that's what's the full value of the amount of the lease outstanding? Here in the question creator, they would determine what the outstanding value of the liability is. 
I have a lot of two marks for that numerical calculation, and the answer is 118,324. But if I want to give some tolerance, let's say I'll allow up to $10 difference in rounding, then I would put colon 10. The last requirement is to record depreciation expense. And again, for this one here, I left previous instructions, enter debits before credits and amounts highest to lowest. I guess because there are only two accounts, I can actually just say enter debits before credits and I can ignore the rest of that instruction. And for the very last requirement to identify what the carrying value of the lease equipment is, the correct answer should be $96,000. And if I want to give some tolerance, let's say for $20 in tolerance, I can do that. And I'm allotting two marks to that. So I will save changes, generate a new preview. I'll put 118330 for the lease liability. I'll put depreciation expense and I'll put 2000 and accumulated depreciation and two thousand dollars and submit and finish and there you go that part would have been marked correctly oh i entered the wrong amount for the equipment i put two thousand it should have been ninety six thousand if you are teaching a course and you allow your students to use variations of account names, such as instead of depreciation expense, let's say DEP EXP. So I'm going to add another variation, depreciation expense. And let's say for accumulated depreciation, you allow ACK DEP. As long as you include the tilde and an equal sign. So I'll save that again. Generate a new preview. Here we'll go depreciation expense, 96,000. Accumulated depreciation, 96,000. I'll submit and finish. And look at that, it marks them correctly on those. Modified account names like DEP EXP and ACK DEP, but not for an incorrect value that I put in 96,000 instead of 2,000. However you teach it, as long as you instruct your students on what you expect, then this can actually work fairly well. Just because this is a lease question doesn't mean this can't be applied to any type of question that requires journal entries. What I'm going to do now is illustrate a variation of this using uh, drop-down menus instead of having to t manually type in the uh, accounts. You might want to do that if it's more of an introductory course and you want to be a bit more forgiving with your students by providing a drop-down list. Okay, so now I'm going to open the drop-down approach. I'm going to generate a preview and here we go. So this question is the exact same question, but notice here that this was already pre-configured to have a list of accounts, and that accounts will include some that don't belong there. And again, you might want to use this because you want to be more forgiving with your students. I've instructed them to enter debits before credits and enter amounts in highest to lowest dollar value. So this one looks a little different from the previous one because I forced them to do a debit first and a credit second. The way this one is presented, uh, it's not. So they actually have to enter debits before credits and then leave a cell blank or zero if, if nothing belongs there. So we know that the correct answer is a debit to right of use asset and a credit to lease liability. The other thing you'll notice is that the order of the accounts in the drop down uh, are not the same in each instance. And so that basically is maybe to keep the student on their toes. You can uh, put them in a certain order. I've chosen to vary the presentation of them. And we would put 120,000, zero for the lease liability as a debit and 120,000. And if we submit, then we know that this is marked correctly. Now, how did I do it? So this variation uses MC or multiple choice. And if we add an S, that will randomize the order in the list. What we have to do there now is include a list of all the accounts they can choose from. You start this question with the squiggly bracket, allot one mark, colon, to a multiple choice MCS question. And the correct answer is right of use asset. All the other items in the list are simply foils. They're incorrect for them to choose. And each one is preceded by a tilde, the little squiggly. And then what you can do is you can create this once and then add as many options as you like. And then you can copy and paste that to wherever you need the answer. And then all you need to do is put the equal sign where the correct answer is. So what I've got here is exactly the same as what's above it except that you can see here, instead of having the equal sign in front of the right of use asset, I put the equal sign in front of the lease liability. 
And then if I look at the other questions below, same kind of idea. Here, this one is going to have a debit to lease liability. This one uh, will have a debit to interest expense, and then we'll have a credit to cash. And you can see where I've included the equal sign. Show me where all the equal signs are, and you can see where I have them. Here's an equal sign. So that just means where I've put the correct answer. You'll also notice with this question type, you do not have to have the correct answer at the beginning. You can actually have the correct answer anywhere in the list, which is what's pretty cool about it. When you have more than one account, that means you could have more than one debit or more than one credit. We start again. The student could actually enter interest expense first, followed by lease liability. Technically, the student would be correct in doing a journal entry this way, but because of some of the limitations with Moodle, I want to force the student to go, okay, 1676 is the bigger number. That's the lease liability which means my interest expense is going to be the next largest debit. And then finally, I'm going to have a credit to cash of the sum of the two, which is 2376. And if I submit those, you can see it marked them correctly for the accounts, the amounts. It marked them incorrect uh, or saying not answered for where there are blanks. If I had entered zeros in there, then they would be marked correct. Again, by allotting no marks, so you can see here, zero marks allotted, it doesn't matter if the student gets it right or wrong, it's not going to count for marks. The rest of the question is essentially the same, or requirements three and five as for the blank approach. The depreciation expense entry is the same question type, MCS have allotted one mark for them to correctly indicate depreciation expense as a debit because here you can see that's where the equal sign is and then a, a mark allotted for accumulated depreciation. I've allotted two marks for the calculation for $2,000 and then even though they need to put $2,000 in for the credit, I've actually allotted no marks for it because I allotted two marks for the calculation. You could change this to one in one and allot uh, a mark for having the $2,000 as a debit and a credit. So that's how you can use Moodle and the close or embedded answer question type to create questions that have some journal entries in them. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them into the comment box below and I hope you found the video useful.